Texas Tower 4 In response to foreign threats during the Cold War, the U.S. built a system of offshore radar towers designed to monitor and detect anything that might constitute an attack. Due to their design being based on the offshore oil rigs commonly deployed near the state of Texas, they were named the Texas Towers. The purpose of the towers was to provide the United States with an extra 30 minutes of warning in the case of an impending Soviet attack. To be effective, they had to be built at sea more than 60 miles offshore. Each tower held dozens of workers in isolation, surrounded by vast stretches of deep, cold water. During its construction in 1957, one of the structures, Texas Tower 4, was damaged by a storm that forced an emergency evacuation and caused half a million dollars worth of damage. By the time Hurricane Donna hit the following year, Texas Tower 4 had earned the ominous nickname Old Shaky. Workers were bombarded with the constant vibration of equipment and haunted by an unusual acoustic effect that caused the structure's steel legs to pick up and amplify distant sounds inescapably throughout the tower. The frequent, unending swaying of the tower caused workers to regularly slip and fall. But the bosses refused to walk away for financial reasons and a fear that Russians could steal equipment and technology. Despite additional repairs in 1960, the tower was still far from steady. On the 15th of January, 1961, a powerful storm caused the movement of the structure to become so terrifying that crewmen began to call their loved ones. One worker's wife later received a phone call saying, quote, you could hear an awful clanging, metal against metal. You could hear them screaming and yelling. At 6.45 p.m., a distress call was broadcast, which simply said, quote, we're breaking up. A military transport ship, the USS New Bedford, attempted to get close enough to the tower to make a rescue, but the brutality of the raging storm kept them out of range. Battered by 80 mile per hour winds, the tower swayed, and over the period of several hours, started to fall apart, beginning with loud bangs from beneath the sea, followed by twisted metallic sounds overhead. Helicopters failed to land, and all further rescue attempts were thwarted by the storm. From the USS New Bedford, Skipper Mangual could only watch as the structure disintegrated before his eyes, and the blip on his radar screen, which denoted Tower 4, vanished. Not one of the 28 men in the tower survived, and owing to the ferocity of the storm, only one body was ever recovered. The wreckage and contents of Tower 4 were lost forever in their watery grave, and the remaining towers were later abandoned and decommissioned. The Duga North of Ukraine's capital city of Kiev lies the vast, largely uninhabited Chernobyl exclusion zone, and these eerie forests hide a gigantic legacy of the Cold War, the Duga. 150 meters high, invisible from miles around, the Duga, which roughly translates to the Ark, was envisioned as a vital, though mysterious, part of the Soviet Union's defense network. At first glance, one might think it to be an immense, foreboding wall, but closer inspection reveals a tangled network of twisted turbines and rusted antennas. To dissuade enemies of the USSR from inspecting the structure, it was surrounded by deadly perimeter defenses and marked with fake signs. On Soviet maps, it was even designated as a children's camp with a cheery cartoon bear mascot. None of these concealment tactics could mask the fact that this object, situated in close proximity to the Chernobyl power plant, emitted an unsettling low-frequency tapping sound, which earned it the name the Russian Woodpecker. Unsure of the device's true nature, some NATO allies speculated that the Duga was a form of mind control weapon, or that it was an instrument designed to manipulate the weather. Others speculated that the mysterious frequency they could hear was capable of destroying brain cells. Much like the rest of the Chernobyl area, the Duga was hastily abandoned and left to nature in the wake of the 1986 nuclear disaster. It now stands tall, rusted, and decrepit, 
a vast tangle of industrial scrap. After the fall of the Soviet Union, it was finally confirmed that the Duga was in fact an over-the-horizon radar system. Its role was to detect long-range missiles beyond the curvature of the Earth, but a lack of understanding of the relevant physics meant that the Duga was doomed to fail even before its construction was completed. Despite its financial limitations, the Duga cost around twice as much to build as the neighboring power plant. It remains a true Cold War relic, a gigantic steel ghost of the USSR. Zelyava Air Base On the Croatian-Bosnian border, beneath a vast mountain, sits one of the largest underground complexes in Europe. Surrounded by landmines to this day, accessing Objekat 505, as it was officially known, remains intensely dangerous. Although now deserted, the original vision was comparable to a supervillain's lair, with the notion of an immense airport built under a mountain evoking popular spy stories. This, however, is not a work of fiction. Sitting in the center of a vast complex of military facilities and installations, this highly secretive airbase's construction was completed in 1965 at the cost of $6 billion. But to withstand a direct hit from a 20 kiloton nuclear bomb, equivalent to that which fell on Nagasaki, its primary purpose was to house a long-range radar early warning system and a large team of military workers. Zelyava Air Base once had living quarters large enough to accommodate thousands, with generators, an underground water source, and a hundred-ton pressurized blast doors. Used intensively during the Yugoslav Wars, the Yugoslav People's Army destroyed much of the complex as they retreated. It is said that the resulting explosions shook the nearby city of Bihać, with residents claiming that smoke rose from Zelyava Air Base for the following six months. The airbase features three and a half kilometers of immense cavernous tunnels, once capable of accommodating a large aircraft, some of which lay abandoned nearby, surrendered to the forest. Today, entry to the airbase is permitted, but strongly discouraged. The most significant dangers are the many unexploded mines, but dangerous levels of radiation have also been detected in the area. Berlich Hellstetten Close to the quaint agricultural town of Belitz in eastern Germany is a sprawling complex of around 60 hospital buildings, which were built at the tail end of the 19th century, to accommodate the growing number of individuals infected with tuberculosis. Designed as a quarantine for those with communicable diseases, and with clear divisions between areas for male and female patients, the Belitz Hellstetten was one of the largest purpose-built structures of its kind. During the First World War, German forces used the Berlitz sanitariums as a military hospital, treating more than 12,000 of their wounded. One of these wounded was Adolf Hitler himself, who had sustained a knee injury and been blinded by a British gas attack in the Battle of the Somme. The Second World War brought conflict to the military hospital, and it fell into the hands of the Red Army, where it remained until 1995, despite the Berlin Wall falling several years earlier. Following the eventual Soviet withdrawal, the complex fell into disrepair, crumbling ever since. Now abandoned, the eclectic mix of architecture and decay has continued to attract tragedy. In 1991, the German serial killer Wolfgang Schmidt murdered the wife of a Soviet doctor and her child nearby. In 2008, a photographer murdered a model following a photo shoot at a surgical theater within the complex. There are also records of multiple people falling to their deaths from structures within the complex, and of a homeless man who had lived in the sanitarium grounds for several years before meeting his end in one of the buildings. To this day, the complex is unsecured and uninhabited, forming an eerie ghost town of medical facilities and haunting corridors, once filled with infectious diseases and the casualties of war. Nakoma, North Dakota During the terrifying heights of the Cold War, the constant threat of Soviet attack led the U.S. to develop a range of anti-ballistic missiles. Anticipating a possible nuclear strike, 
The U.S. military built the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex, also known as the SRMSC, or the Pyramid of North Dakota. This facility, situated near the small farming town of Nakoma, operated for a brief period in the 1970s and has been predominantly empty since. It was designed to facilitate the launching of 30 large Spartan anti-ballistic missiles, as well as 70 shorter-range sprint missiles to be deployed in the event of a Soviet attack. The munitions involved were designed to intercept intercontinental missile strikes, in some cases at altitudes and distances so great that the actual detonation would occur outside of our atmosphere. The shorter-range sprint missiles, a top-secret weapon at the time, were capable of reaching Mach 10 in seconds, turning the air around it to plasma before delivering its own devastating nuclear payload. The complex consisted of three main systems. First, the perimeter acquisition radar was responsible for detecting incoming missiles over the North Pole. Second, the missile sight radar was capable of closely tracking missiles as they neared. And third, the remote sprint launcher would deploy the sprint missiles. Having been operational for less than one year, the complex was famously decommissioned and abandoned in February of 1976, despite having cost an immense sum to build. The buildings and stacks still stand in a solid, monolithic fashion. A dark central concrete pyramid dominates the area. To this day, they somehow simultaneously appear both industrial and prehistoric. The structure's interior consists of boxy steel passages, rusted over and lost to time, leading off into control rooms and launching bays, many of which have been gutted. Frayed cables and warning signs are poignant reminders of the facility's former purpose and of Cold War tensions. Thank you for watching Dark 5. Be sure to like this video to show your support, and tune in again next time for the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond. And let me know if there are any other abandoned places worthy of investigation.